this. FRQ number one, which I'm probably going to have to... Oh, I didn't have to log in again. A projectile is launched from the back of a cart of mass M that is held at rest, as shown above. At time T equals zero, the projectile leaves the cart with a speed V naught at an angle theta above the horizontal. The projectile lands at point P. Assume that the starting height of the projectile above the ground is negligible compared to the maximum height reached by the projectile and the horizontal distance traveled. Part A, derive an expression for the time, TP, at which the projectile reaches point P. Express your answer in terms of V naught, theta, and physical constants as appropriate. All right, well, this is a two-dimensional kinematics, starting with an initial velocity V naught, which I must do what? Decompose. You got to decompose V naught into the horizontal component, which is V naught cosine theta, the vertical component, which is V naught sine theta. And then I need to do kinematics in both the X and the Y direction. Um, so the time it's getting, and, and what direction dictates, what, which motion dictates how long an object is going to be in the air, the horizontal or the vertical? The vertical, right? So the vertical motion, I need to use a kinematic equation, and you got to be a little care, clever here, if you want to not do more work than you need to and just say, well, I'm just going to consider the symmetry, determine how long it takes to get to the top of the motion. Because at the top of the motion, the velocity in the y direction becomes zero, right? So that's a known that we can use. And then we know by symmetry that the time it takes to get to the top is the time that it takes to get back down. Again, we are assuming that the starting height of the projectile Above the ground is negligible. So th that being a given, the acceleration in the y direction is negative g. The initial velocity in the y direction is v naught sine theta. And we're looking for the time that it takes to get to point p. And that's just kinematic equation number one. Good old kinematic equation number one. Final velocity equals initial velocity plus the acceleration times time. Initial velocity, sorry. Final velocity is zero. So I have zero equals the initial velocity in the y direction plus the acceleration in the y direction times time. Um, what the initial velocity in the y direction, v naught sine theta. This is minus gt. The acceleration y direction is negative g times t. Um, and then I subtract this guy, then the negatives cancel. This is, yeah. So I get negative v naught sine theta equals negative gt. Divide both sides by negative g, and I get time equals v naught sine theta divided by g. However, that's the time it takes to get to the top. So the total time to get to point p is going to be 2 times that. Most of you got this one. If you didn't get this one, you are you need to spend the entire weekend doing those progress checks on AP Classroom, okay? Because if you if you couldn't do this one, then you're you're I'm not gonna I'm not trying to sugarcoat it. You're not ready for the AP exam, okay? I know we didn't review mechanics a lot. We didn't have a lot of time. The, the onus is on you at this point. Your test is Monday. The onus is on you. You have four days. Um, if you need to do some problems to remember this stuff, you really need to. Yeah. I got it, but part of what confused me for a while was the, mainly just the picture. I didn't read. It took me a while to realize that the height of the cart is negligible. That's where you got to so read was, carefully. I, yeah, that, so I was like trying to do it with like X and usually P as a variable. Yeah, you got it right there, right? I did get it right. Yeah. I did end up getting it. I can see, yeah, yeah. Read, read carefully, read carefully, because yeah, I mean, as pictured, this height is not negligible as compared to that length, and so, yeah, it would be a lot more complicated if you had to take that into account for sure. Okay, number B was draw the graphs, and this is again motion graphs, guys. Motion graphs on level students, on level physics students, learn motion graphs. And so you got to know how to do motion graphs. These are easy points. There's five, five of the points for this FRQ came from these graphs. Um, 
and I'll show you I'll show you the the distribution of points when we're when we're done with this. Velocity in the x direction doesn't change; is a horizontal line. Velocity in the x direction doesn't change. You could have put it there um, if you define the left as the positive x direction, which I did whenever I made my answer key. Um, you could have put it down here if you define that as the negative direction. That's fine, but key point: horizontal line. Horizontal line. And it did say, explicitly label the vertical intercepts with the algebraic expressions. Well, in the x direction, the object is moving with v naught cosine theta. The algebraic expression telling you what velocity that's indicating, that, that it started at. Did you say v naught in the x direction or instead of v naught? Yeah, yeah. I gave you points for that. And then this one. We would typically define up as the positive direction. So we start with velocity v naught sine theta. And we're undergoing constant acceleration. Velocity time graph, slope is acceleration. Constant acceleration means constant slope. Constant slope means linear. It is negative. It's pointing down. So an object starts with the maximum velocity, slows down until it gets to its maximum height, and then starts speeding up in the negative direction. So that's what that looks like. There's a huge chunk of the points for the FRQ1 came from those. And let, let me actually show you. We'll, we'll go through these one at a time. Um, actually, now let's get through the whole thing first. So motion graphs. Guys, got to know motion graphs. If you're going to lose points, lose points on the integration to find the rotational inertia of a sliver of a disk, right? Lose points on that one. Don't lose points on motion graphs. This is basic. Okay. All right. I'm recording, right? Yes. Yeah. Let's go ahead and look. So for part... For part A, it's two points. The response accurately includes both of the following criteria. Using an appropriate kinematic equation to calculate the time to the highest point of the flight, substituting into the equation and doubling the time. And then an example response there. So two points. Two points for that first part. Um, part B, which is the graphs, five points. A straight horizontal line with positive values on the velocity in the x direction graph correctly indicating the y-intercept on the x-direction graph. A straight line with an initial positive value on the uh, velocity and y-direction graph, so just starting it at a positive point got you a point. A line with negative slope that crosses the horizontal axis and correctly, correctly indicating the y-intercept on that graph. You so, could not have your velocity and the x-direction be below the y. You, you could, you could. This is an example response. Oh, I don't know why that, did it specify direction? Yeah, I think I think that they they would give you the point if it was horizontal. I definitely would. I did for those of you that did it because it is negative. Yeah, it's it's. Yeah, I disagree with that scoring guideline. All right, number C. This is where the projectiles again launch from the same position, but with the cart traveling to the right at speed V1. So the cart's traveling at constant speed when it launches it. The projectile again leaves the cart with speed V0 relative to the cart at angle theta above the horizontal, just like before. And the projectile lands at, at point Q, which is a horizontal distance D from the launching point. Express your answers in terms of V naught theta and physical constants. A lot of y'all, some of y'all, uh, had answers that had other variables. Guys, you, you're going to get it wrong. You might get some partial credit, which, yes, you should be going for. But remember, when it says, I just want to make sure everyone knows that. When it says express your answers in terms of certain variables, if you put any other variable then you will not get full credit. Okay. Give a physical reason why the projectile lands at point Q, which is not as far from the launch position as point P is. 
and explain how that physical reason affects the flight of the projectile. Well, this is literally vector addition. If I have a velocity going this way, and then the velocity, launch velocity of this guy relative to the thing going that way um, is to the left, well, then those two vectors add to tell you what someone standing stationary relative to the two moving objects would see. And uh, a lot of you got this one, and that was good. The scoring guidelines for this one is one point. So one, one fifth of the points as you got for those graphs. Uh, the projectile will not travel as far as the stationary case. The right word component of velocity caused, causes the initial horizontal launch velocity of the projectile with respect to the ground to be less than when the cart was stationary. This is pretty basic. Anything that you said that kind of alluded to that fact in your game. Um, yeah. So it's pretty easy, but then we got to elaborate on that a little more. Derive an expression for V1. So that's the velocity of the cart as it's moving to the right. Expression for V1. Express your answer in terms of V0. Theta. Distance D. And physical constants, which in this case is just going to be G. Pretty sure Planck's constant isn't going to play a role here. So, and then D is the distance that the object will go, right, that will actually end up going. So, this one is trickier. This one you have to realize the vector addition aspect. Um, first of all, if I look at my diagram here, I got my launch velocity just like I did in the beginning. I got my components. V naught cosine theta, V naught sine theta. This distance D, all right? Well, kinematic equation number two for the horizontal motion of a projectile, which is constant velocity, tells us that the distance d traveled is just the velocity in the x direction times time. Right? You with me on that? Um, velocity times time plus one half at squared is the rest of kinematic equation number two. Zero acceleration. And that velocity in the x direction is v naught cosine theta. And then that gets multiplied by the time t. And then we must realize that this velocity. Sorry, yes. I'm dumb. Start here. See, even the best of us make mistakes. The velocity in the x direction is not v naught cosine theta, right? That's what Timothy was getting at. The velocity in the x direction is going to be v naught cosine theta minus v1. Wait, cosine positive x to the left thing? Yeah. Okay. Since everything's moving to the left, I, I'd call that the positive direction just so I don't have to deal with as many negatives. So the actual launch velocity in the x direction is going to be v naught cosine theta, what it would be if the object wasn't moving to the right, and then subtract that velocity from it. And so thank you, apologize for that. So then the distance d is then going to be vx, which is v naught cosine theta minus v1 times the time. And from a previous part of this problem, you might remember, we have an expression for time. And that is 2 v naught sine theta over t. And that's d. And then I need to solve this for v1. Hopefully we got the algebra scale that we can do this relatively quickly, because I do want to make sure that we get as far as we can in these before the end of the period. Multiply both sides by g, I get dg. Divide both sides by 2 v naught sine theta. 2 v naught sine theta is going to equal v naught cosine theta minus v1. Add v1 to this side, subtract this term to that side, and I get v1 equals v naught cosine theta minus dg over 2 v naught sine theta.
There you go. So, so far, really just kinematics, kinematics, motion graphs, a little bit of vector addition. That's it. That's it. Then we get into some more heavy, heavier stuff, but um, as compared to what we've been doing with like uh, circuits and RC circuits and LC circuits and LR circuits. Uh, it's pretty. It's really not that bad. I think some of you probably overthought this a little bit, but the next part says, well, let's look at the point distribution for that one. So, part D was two points. All that, two points. One point, a correct expression for the horizontal component of the velocity of the projectile. So that's, you're right, delta x equals vxt, and you get a point. We're actually substituting into the equation for constant speed. Yeah. Just a sense, when they grade those, they just kind of look at the algebra. If it satisfies those two conditions, they give you the two points. If they see one of those hiding in there somewhere, then they give you the one point. If it's obvious that you either left a blank or didn't know what you were doing, then, you, then that's when you get zero points. All right, number E, I. Using Newton's second law, write, but do not solve a differential equation that represents the motion of a cart while it experiences the braking force. Now, here's where they might get a little nitpicky, so you need to be careful. Newton's second law, oh, sorry, I didn't read the, now we're talking about the cart, right? After the launch, the cart speed is V2, right? If it's moving this way and it launches that thing, conservation momentum says it's going to speed up a little bit. Uh, beginning at time t equals zero, the cart experiences a braking force, f equals negative bv, where f is a function of speed. Again, we mentioned that before, very recently when we talked about air resistance. Sometimes the braking speed is a function of the, the velocity of the object. A braking force is a function of the speed. Where B is a positive constant with units of kilograms per second, and V is the speed of the car, which will be changing. Express your answers to the following terms of M, B, V2, and physical constants as appropriate. Okay. So what you want to understand here is Newton's law, that we need to write, but do not solve a differential equation. Newton's second law is a differential equation most of the time. Okay. F equals MA. If this force is a function of the speed of the object, this is a differential equation. Because I can express that force according to the equation that was given, and that's equal to ma. This is a differential equation, right? Because the acceleration is the derivative of the velocity. A differential equation is an equation that involves a function or functions and its or their derivatives, right? If you wrote it like this, I gave you the point, but you might want to, just to be careful, write it like that. You have a function and its derivative. Okay. That's literally it, that's all you had to do. That's writing the differential equation, but not solving. And looking at the points awarded for it, what do I keep doing? One point, notice there says negative BV equals M DV DT. They might take off points if you just leave, leave it as MA. Technically, it's still a differential equation, but I'm not going to be grading your test. I can't guarantee what's going what's gonna to be done. Okay. E double I. Show that the speed V of T of the cart as a function of time is given by the equation V of T equals V2 E to the negative V times t over n. Um, I think it was a time crunch issue maybe, but I don't think anyone got this. Um, and it's not like it involves math that you don't know. It just might have been, you might have been rushed a little bit. But understand, that's the pace. The pace on the actual exam is going to be a little faster than that because you're going to have three FRQs to do in approximately the same time. So, uh, so yeah, write a or solve, show that the speed v is equal to, what was it, v2 times e to the negative v 
P over M. Right. We want to show this. When it says show that, you can't, you can't just start from there. I think someone started from there and then kind of went around in a circle and came back to there. That's not how it works. You got to show that this is a solution to this differential equation. Okay. Remember, when you solve a differential equation, you're not solving it for a number or a variable. You're solving it for a function. And so I need to start with this guy. Negative BV equals M BV DT. And this is the simplest type of differential equation. It's one that you can solve by separation of variables. In this class, literally all we've learned how to, the only way we've learned to solve differential equations, separation of variables, and then just noticing the simple harmonic motion equation, the solution to it is just a cosine, a sinusoidal function, cosine or sine graph. This we can separate the variables of. Most differential equations you can't separate the variables, but the, the ones, specific ones you can. So that just means get the v's and the dv's on one side and the dt's on the other side, and then put the constants where it's most convenient. Okay. So I'm going to divide both sides by dv, so I get negative b, b over dv. No, that's not, what I, that's not what I want to do. Do I want to put the dv in the denominator, or what, what do I really want? Numerator. You want it in the numerator. So I'll divide both sides by v, multiply both sides by dt. So I get negative b dt equals um, m dv over v. And I know that I'm going to have what? What am I going to get when I do an integral here? Natural log. I'm going to have a natural log. So I want to get everything else to the other side just to make my life a little easier to deal with. So I'm going to divide both sides by m. So I get negative b over m dt equals dv over v. Then I integrate both sides. There's going to be a point too because when we see how many points are awarded for this, you'll, you'll see why one of the strategies that we'll watch in a video tomorrow by Mr. Flipping Physics, leave the math heavy stuff till the end. Like if you can get the five points from the graphs, you'd actually have a lot more points than what you get for solving this differential equation, as you'll see in a second. Um, so it's from time t equals zero to some time t. Um, this integral is easy, right? It's just going to be negative b over m times t, right? This side, though, we want to go from our speed. We're integrating from our speed starting at v2, right? That's when the cart hits the brakes when it starts with a speed of v2 to some speed and we're just we're actually going to integrate this up until uh no, what am i doing breaking up to a speed of infinity <laughs> until it breaks up to a speed of infinity yes um yeah no it's speed you're just searching for speed of v yeah how about i write it like that Gosh, I'm stupid sometimes. <sighs> yeah, I'm jumping ahead with the whole infinity thing. Okay, and so this is just going to be the natural log of v. Evaluated from v2 to v. Correcto? So negative b over m. You might be able to do this more than one step with it. Actually, in the sake of time, this is natural log of V minus natural log of V2, which is natural log of what? V over V2. V over V2. And then I need to solve this for V. So I do E to the negative B over MT equals V over V2. And then multiply both sides by V2. And so I get V as a function of time is going to be V2 times E to the negative B over M times T, which is the same as that. So that's showing that this is a solution to that differential equation. Probably the most, well, let's, let's look at the points of order real quick. Probably the most, two points for that. Two points for that. Five points for the easy motion graphs, two points for solving a differential equation. 
Again, math heavy stuff typically typically doesn't is not weighted the same as like answering conceptual questions or drawing graphs. Um, so you got a point for a correct separation of variables. So you get the V's and DV's on one side, you get the DT on the other side, and you get a point. And then integrating with appropriate limits or constant of integration, you do you solve the rest of it and you get the other point. Okay. Probably the trickiest one here. Not really that tricky when you think about it. But you got to remember stuff. You got to remember specifically motion graph stuff. Derive an expression for the distance the cart travels from t equals zero until the time it comes to a stop. I imagine that most, if not all of you, just said, oh, I don't remember how to do that. And so you just moved on to FRQ2. Which is okay. This is what you want to do on the exam. If you see a problem, you're like, I have no idea how to start that, then come back to it if you have time at the end and move on to something that you are much more likely to be able to get points on. But here, we want to know the distance the car travels. But we have a velocity function. How can I get displacement from, velo uh, from a velocity function? Take its antiderivative. How do I get velocity from, or how do I get displacement from a motion graph, a velocity versus time graph? The integrate, you do the area, right? So if I had, and it doesn't need to be like constant or constant acceleration, could be any arbitrary value here. You want to know the displacement up until this point, this time t, then it's just this area. That area has height, or each representative rectangle has height given by this function and width dt. Right? So all I have to do is integrate this with respect to time. So to solve E number three, or E triple I, delta x is simply going to be the integral of V of t dt. And we are um, integrating with respect to t, t, time, with respect to time. <laughs> and so, so the object is going to be starting the brakes, and then it will end up coming to a stop, right? And so we don't know when that time is going to be, so all we need to do is integrate from 0 to infinity. That's why I said infinity, because I was mixing up my solutions. I'm going to integrate from t equals 0 to t equals infinity, Obviously, it's going to stop. The displacement's going to stop after that, but, but we need some limit of integration to evaluate. And so delta x is simply going to be the integral from 0 to infinity of v2, e to the negative b over m times t times dt. If you're like me and you like showing every single step, I'm going to bring out the v2 times the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative b over m times t dt. And then, depending on how good you guys are at, at integrals, you should you, you might be able to say, well, that's going to be negative m over b, v2, times the integral. And if I'm showing every step, I would say, all right, and then that's going to be negative b over m, e to the negative b over mt, dt. Many of you can probably skip that step. You know what I'm talking about, though, here? You need, you need to, when you're integrating an, exponent, uh, an expo exponential function, um, you need what's in the argument there to be there, right? Because when you do the antiderivative, when you do the derivative of it, then you end up with that in front. You do the antiderivative, it's got to go away. So, uh, but you can't just add that in without adding its reciprocal over here to make sure that it, the total, right? It's a very clever integration trick, trick that hopefully you guys are good at here. So that means I'm going to have negative m, let's say mv2 over b. The integral of this, now that I see the derivative of the, the inside guy or the argument there in front, then that's just going to be e to the negative b over m times t, evaluated from 0 to infinity, which is negative mv2 over b times e. And e to the negative, actually let me write it like this to make it a little easier e to the negative b over mt is 1 over e to the b over mt. If t is approaching infinity, it doesn't matter what b over m is, right? 
It's just going to be 1 over e to the infinity. Yes, I know that's not a number, but it's approaching a number. Minus 1 over e to the 0. This is just going to be 0. So it's going to be negative. And this is 1. So it's minus 1. So you get a positive mv2 over t. That's a displacement. Again, we've defined the left as a positive direction, so that makes sense. Good times? I thought so. Points for that one. Two points. Indicating the distance traveled is the integration of the above equation. Writing this gets you one of the two points. Integrating with appropriate limits. Right. In calculus? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why it's like that. I don't know why it's like that. But that's the way it is. All right, cool beans. All right, we're probably not going to be able to get through the rest of FRQ2, so let me just kind of, because I don't want to do this again tomorrow, let me just kind of go over. Um, some key points here. Okay, free body diagrams, another place where you don't want to lose points, guys. You know, and, and you got to read carefully again. You got this guy's going to unwind as it rolls down, as it, as it goes, moves down. On the circle below that represents the disc, draw and label the forces, not components, that act on the disc. Each force must be represented by a distinct arrow starting on and pointing away from the disc beginning at the point where the force is exerted on the disc. This is rotation. This isn't basic free body diagrams where we just connect arrows to a dot or to a little circle. This is going to be, ro there's going to be rotational dynamics here. So where those forces act, very important. MG's here. The tension is here. Some students did this. Some students put the tension force here. That is not right. If that was true, it wouldn't roll. Wouldn't wouldn't rotate. Okay. A couple of you guys did that. You can't do that. This, this is this is where you don't want to lose points. Free body diagrams, you don't want to lose points on free body diagrams. Okay, so part A, two points for that. Two points for the two vectors. Uh, one with, for the weight force drawn at the center, one for the tension force drawn on the left side. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. You don't mess up the easy stuff. Because you might still do really well. Right? When released from rest, the disc falls and the string unwinds. The force the string exerts on the disc is Ft, and the gravitational force is Fg. Which of the following expressions correctly relates Ft and Fg? I'm going to go fast through this. Fg must be greater than Ft. Because it's linearly accelerating downward. Just because it's rotating, just because the, we have a force over here and a force over here, doesn't mean that Newton's laws for linear motion don't apply. They most definitely do. So the downward force must be greater for, than the upward force in order for the object to accelerate down. Okay. Drive an expression for the acceleration A of the disk as, as it falls. Many of you got started, right? Net force, mass times acceleration. I got mg minus the tension force, I define down as a positive direction, equals ma. Tension cannot be in your answer because it says answer in terms of mr and physical constants. There's no forces in the x direction, so my only alternative in order to get another equation with tension force is to do angular, angular. net torque, rotational inertia times angular acceleration. And then solve that system for the... Uh, And so points for that one, four points for that one. An expression of Newton's second law on linear, expression of Newton's second law rotational. Correctly relating the linear and rotational accelerations, uh, linear equals radius times angular. Whether you're angular velocity, angular displacement, or angular uh, acceleration. It's all linear equals radius times angular. So this guy is simply A over R. So that's the third point. Um, 
and then combining the two equations. All right? Drive an expression for the time delta t that takes to reach the ground. That's kinematics again. This is basic kinematics. You have displacement of 3r. You know you have an expression for the acceleration now. You know it started from rest. That's enough information to figure out what delta t is. For that particular one, two points, because it should be pretty basic at that point. Um, so the substituting the distance into the kinematic equation to calculate the time, substituting the acceleration from part C i into the equation. Okay, all right. Do I have an expression for the rotational kinetic energy of the disk as it reaches the ground? This one's a little trickier, but kinetic energy is i omega squared. i is one half m r squared. Omega. Uh, omega is. Um, Angular acceleration times time by kinematic equation number one for, for, for angular. And then you just make the proper substitutions. Okay. I'm not gonna, I want to get to, well, we're not going to. All right, I'm going to do the last two parts tomorrow. The one with the disk, the rotational inertia, because I do want to go over that, because that most likely will be seen on the exam at some point. So let's go ahead and talk about this then. We want to know the rotational kinetic energy. Rotational kinetic energy is one half I omega squared. All right, I, I actually solved it a little differently than they did. I said, well, omega is V over R, right? Linear equals radius times angular. Okay. So omega is V over R. So rotational kinetic energy is one half I times V squared over R squared. And then uh, this V, I need an expression for. Well, that's final velocity once it reaches the ground. That's just going to be the initial velocity plus the acceleration times the time. Right? Initial velocity was zero. The time from the previous part, the previous part, we got to be uh, three times the square root of R over G. That was just by doing kinematics on the previous one. And so I can plug that into this guy. That linear velocity is going to be the acceleration times 3 square root r over g. So I can plug that in here. Rotational kinetic energy is going to equal, and I'm going to do this. Oh, before I'm sorry, before I even do that, before I plug that in, I have one half. Rotational inertia is one half um, mass times r squared pulley, and that's given to you in the problem. Notice they gave the rotational inertia of the pulley, right? You don't have to remember those. Times v squared over r squared, then the r squared's canceled, so I got one fourth mv squared, or just mv squared over four, so I don't have to deal with like mixed number type stuff. And then I have an expression for v here. All right, so it's going to be m over 4 times this squared. Oh, and the acceleration I know is 2 thirds g. I'm running out of time. A lot of algebra here, though. A lot of algebra for one point. Guys, oh, the progress checks too on AP Classroom. They're available for you. Keep in touch with Connor out there to get to get along or to meet up with his dad. His dad, much better teacher than I am. You probably wish he was your teacher instead of me. You should anyway. But he teaches at a private school, so. But yeah, it's Monday, guys. If you got like between a four and a nine on that. Mock, you got work to do. You got work to do if you want to. You want to pass that thing. So I was hoping to get through all this today, but it just wasn't gonna happen. Every day, guys. What's that? Thir 
13 out of 30 again? That's, that's the average score. Oh. It's exactly the average, yeah.